Science has agreed that unless something is done and done quickly, man as the dominant species of life on Earth will be extinct within a year. The skies above and the seas below, infested by swarms of nightmare creatures, crueler, deadlier than the armored giants of prehistoric eras. Here is a wild, headlong flight into terror as the desert erupts with the grim battle for survival. Oh, hello. That, of course, was the 1954 Warner Brothers classic, Them, and this is The Hook. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Rausch, and I love the University of Texas so much that if I ever have twin boys, I'm gonna name them Gregory and Jim. If you've ever lived in the southern part of the United States, and if you went to UT, you most definitely did, then you're probably familiar with the dreaded South American import that strikes fear into the hearts of so many Americans. No, not Shakira, the red imported fire ant. Fire ants, by the way, came to the U.S. through the port of Mobile, Alabama in the 1930s, so now the 2009 National Championship game isn't the only grudge you can hold against Alabama. And of course, in this edition of The Hook, we're talking about ants and one UT scientist who's giving us another reason to be very, very afraid of them. You see, if you thought fire ants were scary, that's probably because you haven't heard of crazy ants. They're crazy, they're ants, and they're everywhere. I don't just mean in the pages of the New York Times, or the Los Angeles Post, or Scientific American, or National Geographic, or Popular Science. I mean they're actually spreading out all across the South. John, cut to the tape. The ant on the left is a tiny crazy ant, and the larger ant on the right is a fire ant. See the stinger and the droplet of venom on the imported fire ant that the crazy ant just took off of the stinger. And that voice you just heard was that of Edward Lebrun who, despite his name, is not a 12th century French knight. He's a scientist, and he studies ants, both fire and crazy, at UT's Brackenridge Field Lab. Now, in case it wasn't clear what was happening in that video, the crazy ant is attacking a fire ant, and it's immune to the fire ant's venom. But it doesn't sting people the way a fire ant does. So, what's the catch, doctor? If you saw in that video how they were just kind of all moving almost randomly across the space, that's how they are in the house too. So they're sort of, I mean, there may be, there may be trails, but the trails are very wide and, and sort of diffuse. Go on. So this ant is, a, it's an omnivore, which means it eats both insects and sugary honeydew. It's ecologically dominant, which means it's extremely good at monopolizing food resources. It kicks other ant species off of them, including fire ants in these environments. Of course they do. And they're super efficient at taking over and monopolizing ecosystems because that's generally what invasive species do. They're really the Mongols of the insect world. They just ride in from some foreign land and seize up everything they want. They're like Vikings with tiny little pinchers. It's already estimated that they're causing $146.5 million worth of electrical damage a year. Oh God, oh God. Oh, wow. Well, I, I guess the crazy ants haven't taken over yet. Of course, if you want to learn more about crazy ants or Professor LeBrun's research, you can visit his website right there. You can also go to our website for the latest UT news, including our ongoing coverage of the crazy ant epidemic. You can also read my piece about whether or not that English degree is going to get you a lifetime slinging lattes at Starbucks. And you can check out all the flora and fauna of the 40 acres on our interactive 40 acres field guide, which includes the zombie ant, which I didn't mention this time, so you should go check it out. Anyway, until next time, I'm Andrew Rausch. Stay hooked.